Hello everybody and welcome to this. It's the continuation in the series on Jane Eyre and everything I go through in this video series comes from Mr. Bruff's Guide to Jane Eyre, £3.99 at mrbruff.com and amazon.co.uk, written by Kerry Lewis. It's the essential guide to the novel. It contains a lot more information than we're going to go through in this video series. So this is the third part of this mini-series on the structure of the novel and you need to have watched the previous two videos to understand but we are applying Freytag's Pyramid to the different settings in Jane Eyre. That um, seems to be a really good way to analyse the structure. So I'm going to actually go through the rest of this section in this video. So Let's look at Thornfield Hall, which is of course chapters 11 to 27, and we'll begin with a bit of a summary of what happens in these chapters. So in chapter 11, Jane arrives at Thornfield and is welcomed by Mrs Fairfax, the housekeeper. Jane's pupil is Adele, a young French girl whose guardian, Mr Rochester, owns the house and is frequently away. And Jane hears strange laughter and Mrs Fairfax tells off Grace Poole, a servant. There is a lot of French in these uh, chapters and in the ebook there's a detailed translation of the phrases you need to know but I'm not going to go through those in the video. So in chapter 12, one afternoon, Jane volunteers to walk to nearby Hay to post a letter for Mrs Fairfax. And she's sitting on a stile, admiring the rising moon, when a dog, a horse and rider approach. The horse slips on ice and the rider falls to the ground, so Jane helps the man. And upon her return from Hay, she recognises the dog and learns that it belongs to Mr Rochester. In chapter 13, we move to the next day where Mr Rochester invites Jane and Adele to have tea and he's intrigued by three of Jane's drawings. Later, Mrs Fairfax explains that Mr Rochester did not get on well with his family and that he had inherited Thornfield upon the death of his elder brother nine years previously. In chapter 14, one evening Mr Rochester sends for Jane and Adele. He gives Adele a present and asks Jane if she thinks him handsome. She says no. Oops. Uh, they talk about sin, forgiveness and redemption. Mr Rochester promises to tell Jane about Adele's mother. In chapter 15, Mr Rochester tells Jane about his affair with Adele's mother, Celine, and when he discovered that she was unfaithful to him, he ended the relationship. Celine claimed that Adele was his daughter, but he denies that, and she abandoned her daughter, so he made Adele his ward and brought her to England. Later that evening, Jane hears a strange demonic laugh outside her bedroom, and she smells smoke and saves Mr Rochester's life from a fire. He confirms Jane's guess that Grace Poole is responsible for the strange laughter. In chapter 16, the next morning, everyone believes the fire was caused by Mr Rochester falling asleep by a lit candle and Jane learns that he has left and he will be spending time with Blanche Ingram. Jane, who realises she's falling in love with Mr Rochester, tells herself off and draws an imaginary portrait of Blanche, which she compares to a portrait of her own plainer looks. In chapter 17, uh, Jane suspects that there is more to Grace Paul than meets the eye. A week later, Mr Rochester returns with some guests who include Blanche Ingram. Mr Rochester insists that Jane join them in the drawing room after dinner. His guests first ignore Jane and then Blanche begins a discussion that results in the guests criticising governesses. Jane's upset and tries to leave. Mr Rochester allows her to leave but tells her she must go to the drawing room every evening. He almost betrays his feelings for her. Chapter 18, the guests play charades. Jane believes Mr Rochester will marry Blanche for her beauty and status and that Blanche will marry him for his money. Mr Mason, who met Mr Rochester in the West Indies, arrives at Thornfield where Mr Rochester is away from home and a gypsy woman tells the fortunes of the young and single ladies. Blanche goes first but does not look happy with the results and the gypsy refuses to leave until she's spoken to Jane. Chapter 19, Jane realises the gypsy is Mr Rochester in disguise. He looks shocked and troubled when she tells him Mr Mason is in the house. Chapter 20, Jane and the guests are woken by cries for help. Mr Rochester tells them that a servant has had a nightmare and after the guests return to their beds, Mr Rochester asks for Jane's help. 
On the third story of the house, she finds Mr. Mason, who's been stabbed and bitten. So she uh, cares for his wounds, and Mr. Rochester forbids Mr. Mason and Jane to talk to each other um, while he gets a surgeon who takes Mr. Mason from the house. Jane and Mr. Rochester walk in the orchard, and Mr. Rochester asks Jane whether a man should ignore an obstacle that's been created by society in order that he can marry. And Jane says he should look to God, not a human being, for his salvation. In chapter 21, a servant from Gateshead brings news that, triggered by the suicide of the dissipated and debt-written John Reed, Mrs. Reed has had a stroke and is dying. She now wants to talk to Jane. At Gateshead, Jane sees Bessie, now married with children. Her cousins Eliza and Georgiana hate each other, and Mrs. Reed is still unfriendly towards Jane. Before she dies, Mrs. Reed gives Jane a three-year-old letter from John Eyre, her father's brother. He wants to adopt Jane, uh, adopt Jane <laughs> and make her his heir. Mrs. Reed had deliberately withheld the letter. Chapter 22, Jane stays at Gateshead for a month after her aunt dies. She walks the last party of her return, the last part of her return journey to Thornfield and meets Mr. Rochester, who seems happy to see her, and Jane is glad to be back. Everyone at Thornfield gives her a warm welcome. In chapter 23, Mr Rochester, Rochester pretends to tell Jane he has decided to marry Blanche. He says he knows of a position as a governess for uh, Jane in Ireland. Uh, Jane is upset, but to her astonishment, he admits he's only been talking about Blanche to make her jealous, and he then proposes to Jane under a chestnut tree. There's a storm, so they rush back to the house where Mr Rochester kisses Jane repeatedly, witnessed by an amazed Mrs Fairfax, and the next day they learn that the chestnut tree has been split in half by a bolt of lightning. In chapter 24, Mrs Fairfax is suspicious of Mr Rochester's motives and advises Jane to keep him at a distance as, quote, gentlemen in his station are not unaccustomed to marry their governesses, end quote. So to Jane's great reluctance, he insists on buying her jewellery and silk dresses and Jane insists she will remain a governess until they marry. Uncomfortable with Mr Rochester lavishing money on her, Jane decides to write to her uncle John Eyre in Madeira to announce her pending marriage and if she inherits her uncle's fortune, she'll feel more at ease with being kept by Mr Rochester. Now, Important to say that in chapter 25, the night before their wedding, Jane tells Mr Rochester that the preceding evening she awoke from a bad dream to see a fearful and ghastly woman who tore her wedding veil in half. Mr Rochester, blaming Grace Poole, suggests that Jane saw her in a state between sleeping and walking and uh, waking and he says that he will explain why he keeps Grace in the house after they've been married for a year and a day. In chapter 26, it's Jane's wedding day. During the ceremony, the priest asks if there are any impediments. A solicitor called Mr Briggs declares that Mr Rochester is already married. <gasps> Mr Mason, also present, has signed a letter stating that 15 years previously, Mr Rochester married his sister, Bertha, in Jamaica. Mr Rochester admits that his wife, who's mad and looked after by Grace Poole, is still alive. He insists that they visit her and Bertha Rochester attacks him. Jane learns that Mr Mason had been in Madeira when John Eyre received her letter and Mr Eyre was on his sickbed so he asked Mr Mason to return to England to stop the bigamous marriage. And in chapter 27 Mr Rochester proposes that he and Jane pretend to be a married couple and live in the south of France. Somebody once said that to me. Uh, Jane, not wanting to become his mistress, refuses. Mr Rochester explains the history of his marriage and to avoid temptation Jane leaves Thornfield just before dawn. That took a while, didn't it? So let's apply Freytag's pyramid to those chapters. Well, the exposition would be, of course, Jane's arrival at Thornfield, where we meet Mrs Fairfax and Adele, the strange laughter which is linked to Grace Poole, the characters and setting now firmly established. The inciting incident would be where Jane meets and helps Mr Rochester. The entire story revolves around his arrival, his impact on her and how he awakens her love and desires. He's a catalyst for the rising action.
The rising action is the fire in Mr Rochester's bedroom, Jane's jealousy of Blanche Ingram, Mr Mason being attacked, thereby developing the mystery, Jane's visit to Gateshead and receiving John Eyre's letter, the proposal under the chestnut tree, the ghost who enters Jane's bedroom and tears her bridal veil in half, Jane's nightmares prophesying doom, lots and lots of things involved in the rising action. The climax is on the wedding day, where Jane discovers that Mr Rochester is already married. The falling action, the aftermath of events in the church. Jane sees Bertha Rochester and learns her story. Mr Rochester asks Jane to become his mistress. And in the resolution prompted by the vision of her mother who urges her to flee temptation, Jane decides to leave. The denouement would be that she leaves weeping wildly. Well, this has been really a long video already, so what I'm going to say is that in the ebook you can see the further explanation of the structural analysis as well as ch uh, chapter summaries for Morehouse, Marsh End and Morton, that's chapters 28 to 36, and then after that, Thornfield and Ferndean, chapters 36 to 38. I'm not going to put those in the video series because I think you've listened for long enough for this video, so you'll have to pick up the ebook if you want the rest of the uh, structure analysis.